Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today I'm going to talk to you about what it's like to drive a road rally, the road rally experience. You've seen me drive the mod ball and you've seen the sort of experiences that we've had. Now I'm going to talk in detail about the fun part of it and the planning part and also about segregation between the perceptions of a road rally and an actual road rally, because that is very important for you, especially from the point of view of insurance. Keep watching, because later on in the video, I'll be talking about the different aspects of those types of, of events and how to prepare yourself and make sure that you're insured. So road rallies can be separated into two types of events. And this is gonna sound crazy, I know, but I'm talking now in the eyes of the law and more importantly, in the eyes of insurance companies. Road rallies can be separated into a drive out with friends. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy. And it can be separated into a proper organized road rally. Now, with regards to a drive out with friends, you've got to be very careful. In the eyes of an insurance company, it becomes a road rally, an organized road rally, if you've advertised a meetup point, an end destination, and intermediary waypoints. So if you're doing a drive out with friends, a collection of friends, especially in supercars, make sure that you don't advertise on public mediums, the actual meetup places, the meetup venues, the, the um, waypoints along the way that you're stopping for food or for fuel, and you don't advertise the end destinations because, because in the eyes of the insurance companies, that is then classed as a road rally event and you need road rally insurance. And that is a royal pain in the ass, I can assure you. How do I know? The mod ball rally was a nightmare for me to get insured for absolute hell it was the biggest problem for that road rally event now we've got that sorted out and i'll talk a little bit more about the insurance problems later on what's it like and what's the planning like i mean obviously there's more planning with regards to a proper organized road rally event you've seen the fun times obviously we're working when we create these videos as well so obviously there's a, there's a lot of work involved in us so we're grafting when we're doing it but obviously there's a hell of a lot of fun involved otherwise we wouldn't do it you know now we've recently taken part in the Modball Rally, which is a big road rally in the UK. Now it's not actually good, or it's not scheduled anymore to be planned in the UK. It's only gonna take part in Europe. So we, in, in effect, took part in the last UK-based uh, Modball Road Rally. I'm gonna break the road rally event down into two categories or two sections. First of all, there's the planning, and then there's the actual taking part in the event. So with regards to the planning, this is a lot more than you, than you would ever think. And the biggest pain in the ass is the insurance. You need proper road rally insurance, organized road rally insurance um, to take part in, a, in an organized road rally. Most insurance companies aren't interested. Now, the biggest problem here is that if your insurance company that you're with does not cover you, then to get cover for a road rally event for just the few days of that road rally event for Modball, it was just two driving days for us. The event took part over four days, but it was actually just two days driving nobody would cover us just for two days or in effect they wanted to charge us the same amount as it would be for having an annual period of insurance which is ridiculous so i had some quotes in around thousand one and a half thousand pounds um and i think i had one quote in around three thousand pounds it's just absolutely super crazy you can't go forward with that unless you're very wealthy and then if you're very wealthy you're probably self-insuring anyway so that is the first thing if you're going to take part in road rallies if you're thinking at all you're going to take part in organized road rallies make sure that your current insurance company covers you and the best way to do that because they have all sorts of small print in the insurance policies the best way to make sure of that is actually get in touch with your insurance company your insurance provider by email do it by email because you're covered legally and make sure you're covered make sure you're thinking about taking a road rally event where you organize the insurance and so make sure when you set up your insurance policy you're covered for organized road rallies and it stipulates that specifically in your policy um, be careful of any gray areas where you're not covered um, in any clauses where they say okay you're covered but then other clauses negate it because that does happen as well now I had this situation with the insurance company I was with, they actually documented that I was covered for organized road rallies in the insurance policy. But I maybe stupidly would say, but I'm you know due diligence, I wanted to make absolutely sure and it's important to notify your insurance companies when you're taking part in such events, even if it does state that you're covered. So I contacted the insurance company and they went to the underwriters and the underwriters refused it and I said, well, it's in the policy that you cover an organized road rally and they said no we're not happy with it we're not happy with the with the mod ball event we're not i'm not happy with you with covering you for that event 
And I said, well, this is crazy. It actually says it. And I, and then I tried to get insurance elsewhere and nobody would cover me. I was getting quotes, as I said, of around £1,000, £3,000, just ridiculous. And it got to the point where I was, ne I was nearly getting to the stage where I'd have to cancel the actual, the actual rally and because I'm not going to pay £3,000 for two days of driving. It's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not wealthy enough to do that. I just can't do that. So in the end, um, I pressured the insurance company and in, a, in the end they, they went to the underwriters and they said, okay, we'll cover you, but they put a big excess on it. I'll put it here um, so that you know what the excess is, but it was a crazy excess um, so that I could cover off this event. It was just ridiculous. And yeah, I was tempted and saying, sod that, I'm not going to do it. But I thought, well, just have to make sure I, you know, I'm careful when we're driving. I'm you know, obviously going to be careful driving anyway and just have to take the chance and just have to go forward with the insurance with that risk, um, um, with that excess, um, which was you know, a nightmare and very stressful, but um, that's what I did. And that's the only way I was going to get insured for that road rally event um, to make sure that I could do that road rally and not miss it. So that's what I did. So guys, again, emphasizing again, make sure that if you're intending to take part in any road rally events, any organized road rallies, then make sure your current insurance policy covers you. And when you're renewing, make sure you ask for that specifically. And it's the same thing for track days. If you're intending to do track days, make sure you're covered within, within your current policy or when you're renewing for your new policy that you are covered at that time because you don't want to be adding that on later on. It's very, very, very expensive. That's part of the preparation. Now there's many, many other aspects to the preparation of a road rally. Um, there's the key thing, which is getting your car ready. Um, that, is, that is quite substantially important. Um, so there's things like um, making sure your car is physically ready. I mean, obvious things like making sure your car isn't low on oil. It's making sure it's topped up. Don't over top it up. Um, make sure that you've got good quality road tires on there, that your road tires aren't old. They aren't too old. And I would say no road tires on a road rally event over four to five years old, definitely have them as fresh as possible. So preferably um, one to two years old and that's the manufacturer's date. So make sure you check the manufacturer's date on your tires, guys. Um, because that's very important. Even though the tires may not look old, they may not look cracked, um, the rubber does depreciate over time. So make sure um, your tires aren't too old when you take part in these events, and they shouldn't be too old anyway when you're driving the car. It's a performance car at the end of the day. And also make sure that you're checking the tread depth. Um, make sure that the tread depth is legal across the three quarters of the width of the, no, across the whole width of the tire, sorry, and across the circumference. Um, I do actually provide these metrics and I provide all this information in a video where I, I provided a video earlier on, um, preparing your car for road rally up, links below for that video. So watch that video, that gives you the full details, the full details of how to check your oil levels, how to check your brake fluid levels, how to check your water levels, and how to check your tire tread depth. Um, so make sure that you check out that video because that gives you full appreciation of how to check those rudimentary elements for your car before you, before you go forward for a road rally event. That is vital that you, that you check those items. Um, there's other preparations that you need to do. You'll notice during the cannonball run, during the mod ball run, um, during the gumball rally of course, um, that there's company endorsements all over the cars. There's stickers um, advertising companies all over the cars. So how does that happen? How do these stickers get put on and, and who decides what stickers are used etc? Well, usually what happens, and this is the same for the gumball rally and for the mod ball rally, and I assume for the cannonball run as well. So first of all, you meet up, then you go in and you register. That's the first thing you do. Same thing for the gumball rally, same thing for the mod ball rally. You go and you register. Um, so it lets the organizers know that you're actually here, that you're registered, you're gonna take part, you've arrived, etc. That's very important. Obviously the organizers need to know that. And then they provide you with your endorsement stickers, with your, in effect, your company advertising endorsement stickers. So it's recommended before you turn up, if, you, if at all possible, or while there, you get your car cleaned, um, or you bring cleaning agent with you so that you can put these stickers on onto a clean car, because if you, obviously these stickers aren't gonna stick very well to a dirty car. So what I did was, because we, if you again, check out the links below, I'll put the links into the video below. Uh, we did the 765 LT review um, video just before we registered for the Mod Ball event. Um, so we did that review of the 765 LT first of all. And then, um, so we driven the, 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 all the way up to Edinburgh over two days. Our car was, you know, certainly not clean. And we did that 765 review, so we didn't have time really to clean the car properly. And then we went up and we met up um, the other mod ballers outside the Intercontinental Hotel. 
And then we went and registered quickly and then we got all our stickers. So I thought, okay, how the hell am I gonna get my car clean? Um, it was planned for the car to be washed um, by, by a friend's colleagues who, who washed his car at the actual parking area. But unfortunately, because we were late, because we took longer to do the 765 LT review, et cetera, et cetera, but we didn't have time to do that. So what we did was um, I had some cleaning agents with me. I always come prepared, so I had some cleaning agents and some rags, et cetera. So what I did was where we were putting the stickers, I made sure I cleaned the car down, first of all, where those stickers were going to be placed. And what you do is you get the stickers that are going to be placed on the car and you plan out where that sticker is going to be actually fixed on the car. You clean that area on the car and then you put some water, some moisture on the car where the area is so that when you put the sticker on the car it's it can float a little bit on that thin membrane of water um, so you can maneuver it and you can squeegee out then the water and then the sticker you can get the sticker looking pretty perfect if you do that otherwise you're into the situation if you think about it a tacky sticker trying to put a you know a, a, a sort of sticker on the car and then it just bubbles and everything else you know if you look at our our mod ball sticker on the front. What, if you take a look at the videos and you look at the mod ball sticker on the front, you see that it had some bubbles in it. We just couldn't get rid of those bubbles because um, we were rushed trying to put our stickers on because again, we turned up late doing the 765 LT review um, and we didn't have the ability to squeegee out the bubbles. And what it meant was that when we were driving um, during the, the, the first half, I think it was halfway through the first part of the day, the actual bottom part of the sticker actually ripped off um, with, the, with the wind turbulence as we were driving. Um, it looked actually quite cool, I think, anyway, but um, but it's not great, obviously, from, for the stickers to start coming off. So that's a, that's a great way of doing it. So once you've, once you've planned out and you get all the stickers on your car, which, you know, allocate a good hour to put those stickers on your car, there's a hell of a lot of them and it's very important. All these endorsement stickers are obviously companies that are playing, that are paying the organisers of the rally a certain amount of money to advertise. This is this is standard practice, and it's it happens, you know, with all the with all the rallies. This is all part of it, and it looks cool because you've got all these emblems, as it were, on your car, and it's very denotable that you're all driving a, a rally, and you feel part of the rally as well. So it's it's the identity of the rally. It you know it's very very cool, and it and you, it really makes you feel that you're all part of it, um, which which is a great you know it's just a great experience the whole thing. And and you know with the stickers on your car, it's really cool that your car looks that way, and everybody recognises it and recognises is that you're in some special event. You can add your own endorsement stickers usually. I know you can for the Modball Rally. I'm not too sure about the Gumball Rally, but for the Modball Rally, you can add your own endorsement stickers after you've put on the compulsory endorsement stickers. And that's what we did. So we went to the same company. Um, we, we liaised with John, who's the founder of the Modball Rally event, and he took part in the Modball Rally event, as you can see from our videos. I liaised with John, um, the company that they use for creating their own stickers, or some of their own stickers, uh, which was actually fairly close by to where we live, which was great. And what we did was we went to them and we, we organised um, having our own advertising marketing stickers made up, Rich Review stickers. And so they were made up in such a way that it would clearly advertise the Rich Reviews channel. They didn't, didn't look the perfect type of sticker that you'd want on your car all the time, but they were blatant and that's what you need. For that sort of event, you need something that's blatant, that's clear, that's advertising. That is your YouTube channel for us. That is your YouTube channel and it's very clear what the YouTube channel name is. That's the key thing about marketing. So people could not miss it. And people mentioned that they actually subscribed to the channel based on the fact that they saw those that, that marketing on the car. So that was really cool. It worked, you know, and that's what it's all about. Now, once you've fitted your endorsement stickers or the stickers for the rally, including your own, that's pretty much it. You're pretty much done with regards to the organization aspect of the rally and pre preparation side of the rally, apart from making sure that your car is full up with fuel. Something we, <laughs> something we didn't get right. We'd driven all the way up there. We'd got fuel obviously part way up. We'd done the 765 LT review and then we just didn't have time to fill up in between. We had to go and re register because you have a certain time slots. Um, you have a certain time window when you've got to register. Um, so we didn't have time to get fuel. So what we had to do was once we'd registered, once we put the stickers on, and what we did um, then in, um, is because then you had the, the, the kickoff event, so what we had to do is actually get fuel the next morning, which was a bit of a rush for us. So we got up a little bit earlier, we had our breakfast quick, and then we legged it out, took the car out, got some fuel, then brought the car back so that we were prepared for the, for the rally kickoff event. Obviously the one thing we did not want to miss was the start up. That is a vital thing for a road rally, especially when you're filming it, is the start off because the, um, the, the mayhem that occurs, as you will see from our videos at the beginning is just astronomical. It's great fun and you do not want to miss the, the, the kickoff, the start off of the event. So 
the fun aspects of the event. I was a bit hesitant about actually doing it because I'm, you know, flipping, um, you know, the cars being, these cars being mileage sensitive, especially my 45A. You're thinking, oh God, I'm gonna put thousand miles on the car. Is that gonna cause problems with resale, yada, yada, yada. You gotta forget all that. I don't regret taking part in, this, in, in the Modball Rally at all. It was a super fun event, absolutely great fun. If you're worrying about those aspects with regards to taking part in an event, then obviously it is part of it all. You know, you've got to be careful of mileage, you know, mileage sensitivity, etc. But if you're worrying if, if taking part in the event won't overweigh your concern about the mileage that you can put on the car, don't worry about it, you're gonna have great fun. You know, if you're into driving and you're into camaraderie with friends, etc., and socializing, don't worry about it, you're gonna have great fun. It's just absolutely great event. Usually these events kick off um, from the social aspect, um, they kick off with a black tie event. That's quite common. Um, not necessarily black tie, but it's some sort of meal, party, um, socialist, socializing, get together. Um, with regards to the mod ball, it was a black tie meal. Um, again, it gets you, gives you a chance to meet everybody um, for, the, for the organizer and the founder uh, to talk about the event and to obviously G you up a bit and to start having some jokes and fun between you. Obviously, you know, you have some beers, etc. So, you, you know, everybody's drinking um, and it's just a great event. You know, you're in black tie, so you're all having fun because you've all dressed up. Obviously, that's a pain in the ass as well with the organization because you've got to bring you know, black tie um, regalia to the event. You're socializing, you get to know the people who are taking part in the rally. You tend to drive with the same um, groups of people. And that's, that's the fun aspect of it as well, you know? Um, and you can see from our filming that we're filming all the cars. So um, when, we're, when we're driving on the different aspects, especially when you're driving on dual carriageways or on the motorways, and we're pulling up alongside the cars and we're making sure we get coverage of the cars. We, you know, they, they then accelerate away, so we're getting all that sort of coverage of the car. So there's a lot of work involved with regards from our side, but obviously great fun as well. But all that camaraderie of driving on the dual carriageways, driving on the motorways, um, catching up with the different groups, because you usually have different groups of drivers. That's just how it happens. It's, it's not planned, it's just how it happens as you're driving and people tend to group together. Um, so you can catch up with the different groups and drive around them and, and yeah, it's just great fun. You know, the whole camaraderie of it is absolutely astronomical. And that is the key thing about an organized road rally. The key thing about the, about the fun element of it is the camaraderie between the all different eclectic type of people that you meet. And I think it's fair to say that it's very, very rare for you to fall out with any of the people, any of the members um, in a road rally event because everybody is very open. Everybody's very, um, very much there for fun. Everybody has the same sort of mindset. They all love cars. Everybody was super cool. Everybody was great fun. Um, you know, when we met up at the, at the different stages, you know, it's just fun, you know, great, great aspect, great, great atmosphere. As you drive on the various days, you've got definitive waypoints where you meet up for fuel and for food, etc. You know, for us, for example, for the first day for the Modball Rally, we drove out from Edinburgh and it was, as you could see, it was just astronomical. Um, it was an astronomical event to drive out from Edinburgh. You know, you had the flares going, you had people revving the cars, going driving around the centre car park section. Uh, police turned up, but they didn't caution anybody. I think they were there much to see the spectacle of it. People were turning up, taking photographs and video in it, etc., because they realized what was taking place, that it was a kickoff of a road rally. So we then drove off, and then you've got your, your relative waypoints that you meet at. So for us, we met at Lake Windermere, first of all. Well, first of all, we met up, met up and we got some, um, we got, um, some fuel. And we'd already got some fuel, but we, you know, some people met up and we got some fuel a certain stage on because you know, some people had to get fuel earlier than others. Obviously, different cars drink fuel in different, different manners. And then our main first destination was Lake Windermere. So we went from Edinburgh to Lake Windermere um, and through the Scottish borders, of course. And the Scottish borders driving, I mean, absolutely stunning scenery, you know. Um, and when we were driving from the Scottish borders to Lake Windermere, we were driving along with a hurricane, Perfomante. And that was super fun. As you can see us overtaken and we were there with the with the one in a mud ball um, photograph vans as well and, and getting some photographs taken as we were driving along. And it was really cool driving in tandem with this, with this hurricane um, while we were driving the Scottish borders. So you've got this fantastic scenery of the Scottish borders and then you've got the great fun of driving with, with this hurricane. And um, you know, we obviously did some exhilarating driving. And when we got out of the cars at the first stage point where we met up to get some fuel and to get, you know, coffee and snacks, etc. Um, you know, the guys got out, we sort of looked at, looked at them and they said, well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> that pretty much covers it off, you know? <laughs> 
great, great event. You can see by, you know, I'm reliving it in my mind. You can see that it was a super cool event to do. And, you know, it was a great, great event. And then, you know, we went on from Lake Windermere onto the first uh, meet, first end waypoint, which was Manchester. Um, and then we had a meal at Manchester. So, you know, you've got, got the, all these elements, the real fun elements. You've got the driving, obviously super cool. I can't emphasize that enough. Great, great fun, the driving. Obviously drive safe, um, make sure you're driving within the law and, um, you know, have great fun. So the driving is it's astronomical fun. So if I was going to break down the best driving aspects and the best driving areas for the for the Modball Mod Ball Rally, so for the rally that we took part in, I would say it would be the kickoff. So the kickoff event was absolutely astronomical. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy kickoff event. So, um, you know, when you when you start off a rally, it's just phenomenal. You can see, you know, again, check the videos below. Um, the, you know, you've got flares going, everybody's revving their cars. It's just astronomical atmosphere, just phenomenal. So it'd be the kickoff of the, of the actual rally event. And then um, it was driving the Scottish borders. Um, when I said, remember, driving the Scottish borders with the hurricane. And then you've got um, the actual uh, section when, on the second day when we were driving in the Elan, in the Elan area. So when we, were, we were going over the dams, the relevant dams around the Elan Visitor Center around that area. Um, and of course, you're driving the Brecon Beacons, you know, as you come into Cardiff, you're driving the Brecon Beacons area. I mean, it's astronomical roads, you know, absolutely phenomenal roads. So, so that would be the, with regards to the sections of roads that we drove, there, there, would be, there would be the main sections of road. But the whole rally was just astronomical. The whole event was just was super, super cool. The camaraderie. In, incredible as much fun as the driving doing everything together it's just a great cool event and you're talking about it all the time you're living it together as a group you're constantly talking about it and one thing I one thing I haven't mentioned yet is make sure you get yourself organized with um, some sort of walkie-talkie radio shortwave radio um, because that makes it super cool as well that adds another element to it and, and we were using our walkie-talkie radios um, and um, that meant that we could communicate. That was within our certain group. We, we all had the same um, configuration of radios and that meant that we could communicate between each other and obviously you can you know, tell if there's anything to watch out for, you know what I mean? Um, so you can you can communicate on the walkie-talkie radios and if you're worried about whether or not they're, they're legal or not to talk on walkie-talkie radios, no, they're not illegal. They're outside of the new mobile phone restrictions. Now there's new mobile phone restrictions, the use of mobile phones in cars, there's new legislation that's come in. Walkie-talkie and walkie-talkie radios are outside of that regula those regulations. And with us, of course, that added an extra capability of us to try and organize people a bit so that we could get cars moving around so we could catch it on video for you guys, you know. We had some lovely meals um, when we were at different stages. So when we were at Manchester, we had a great meal. Cardiff, that was, that was fantastic. We had a lovely steak meal there. And that meant, you know, that uh, it, was, it was a nice close off to the event for us, you know, having that meal um, and then having some drinks afterwards, of course. And then, of course, you know, it's a bit bit of a downer when you have to then go and get your car in the morning the next day and then you have to leave. You know, it's, it's a bit of a downer when you're then leaving. Life is about experiences. You ain't on this planet very long and, you know, just get and freaking do it. Just get and freaking do it, guys. These are bloody great fun, you know, and you will talk about it forever. I'm living through the memories now, you know, and it was, it was, you know, quite some time ago that we did this road rally event in the summer. Um, and I'm living through the memories in my mind now, and I'll be living through the memories forever, you know, and hopefully I'll be able to take part in a gumball rally, I'll be able to cover that off for the channel as well. But it's an astronomical cost to take part in a gumball rally. I'd really love to do that, but until we, we've got the channel moved forward, subscribe, please, guys, you know subscribe and help us move the channel forward um, and then we'd like to cover off the gumball rally for you in the future but the cost to take part in a gumball rally is just just horrific um, unless we've got sponsorship um, unless the channel is making to be blunt unless the channel is making money for us in, in a in a good way um, not just drip feeding funds but is, is in a good way then we just won't be able to fund something like the gumball rally um, but we'd really love to cover that off for you as I mentioned earlier also just to cover off and finalize on the insurance side. You have to, you know, insurance is gonna be your biggest problem with regards to taking part in, in, a, in an organized road rally. Just make sure that before you renew your insurance, you've spoken to your insurance provider and your insurance provider has agreed formally to you. It's either written into your policy or they've provided you a legal email, legally binding email that makes that covers you off and makes sure that you are covered for the road rally event. Um, that's vital. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, you know, even if it details it in your documentation, if it's generic a bit, then make sure you formalize it and do this way beforehand. 
Um, like I say, if, you, if you've got any perception at all that you're taking part in an organized road rally, make sure that when you renew your insurance policy for the next renewal, obviously before you take part in a road rally, make sure you've spoken to them and make sure you're covered off um, for insurance for an organized road rally and for that particular type of event. Two key things with regards to the, the you know, taking part in a road rally are, um, are the preparation and the key thing is obviously the enjoyment aspect. The key thing about the, the enjoyment is a camaraderie with all your fellow um, rally eventers. So, you know, for us, it's all the mod ballers, but it could be the gun ballers, etc. cetera, um, and the driving, you know. And if you're thinking about taking part in one, guys, just freaking do it. It's just awesome, you know, great event. And hopefully, as I've said, we'll be able to cover off the Modball Rally for you. That would be a phenomenal experience for us if we can cover off the Modball event. So guys, if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Vitally important for a small channel that you subscribe. It really helps us. Um, we have a lot of viewers who aren't subscribed at the moment. It, it, you know, it really helps us to move forward. We're only a small channel. We're self-funded at the moment. So all the camera kit, all the bloody, um, all the, all the, all the laptop kit for all the editing. We have to have the fastest type of laptops because of high, 4K, high bit rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this is all funded by us. You know, we only um, the, the channel is monetized, but we get a very small amount of funding. We need to grow the channel with regards to subscription base and view rates uh, to be able to really start moving the channel forward and enable us to do great events in the future for you. And we'll provide that coverage. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It's free to do so. Um, so it's really helpful for us if you were subscribed, guys. And you can unsubscribe at any time. Thanks a lot to our loyal viewers for keep watching. Thanks a lot to all of you for watching our videos. Really appreciated. And we're going to catch you in the next video.